Right, this is Sheila and the parallel tree predicament of explanation for a young person to understand and some big people if you're not totally aware of it this can be extremely difficult to understand that's why I drew this sort of diagram which I put on Facebook the other day with Matilda of Huntington in the middle her two husbands either side all her children coming from Simon St. Liz that way leading to me all her children going with David the first of Scotland leading to Prince Charles and Prince William that side so that's our royal family there and there's us there but we both share her <coughs> and um, I've been doing various diagrams to try and get it all down in and sort of order different big pieces of paper and everything uh, even starting off with going back as far as Robert the first Duke of Normandy who was the father of William the Conqueror and William the Conqueror's sister Adelaide because from, from the William the Conqueror we've got we come all the way down through the Henrys the Edwards and the Henrys of England kings of England through Matilda of Huntington and her marriage to King David of Scotland we get all the kings all the Bruce's, all the James's, until eventually we link back up with the English kings coming down to a certain extent with Elizabeth I. That is a link, except she didn't have an heir, so it was Mary Queen of Scots leapt in, and then we had a united, united kingdom with Scotland and England as one. Um, and my side of the family fit in here, as probably do a lot of people's, with Simon St. Liz and Matilda, my times 24 great-grandparents. I think they're, Prince Charles is 28th or, or even 30th, because they've got more marriages they manage to fit in. Obviously, they don't live as long as in Scotland. I also use my tree, my big database that I've got, that I use to, um, you know, uh, look at look at things. For example, I've got my medieval ancestors, um, which come up, and all the, the all the um, interrelationships I've got there. So I'll just click on Matilda of Huntington, for example. We've got her here, Matilda of Huntington. Let's get her up bigger. Oh, look, I've got Prince William and Kate on there. My parallel tree on there. Their marriage. Matilda, my 24th great-grandmother. And um, all the relationships. Her husband, David I of Scotland, and her other husband. From David, we go back to the present royal family now. And through their other husband, you come for, through all the people in my tree from Simon, the first Earl of Northampton. Um, there's about 27 photos on there. There's audios, there's stories on here, different pictures and images that I've done as well. Anyway, I've been trying to make sense, like I said, of this parallel tree. It's simple, really. I've done a big diagram on the floor. Here, down here, we've got um, Daisy and Amber, and their mum, Georgia. Then we've got Zara and Duncan, who haven't got any children. We've got Jolene with Corin, Jack, and Lucy. And then, if you follow this line, you come to me. And then, we keep following this line. There's my mum. Matilda. Now the pink symbolises my side of the tree coming from Matilda. There's Mary Ann Oak Brooks, my great grandmother. Sir Martin Stutville, my times nine great grandfather from Dunham and Suffolk, who's an important person. And all these other noble people, barons, sirs, knights, married into famous families in England. And Simon St. Liz the Crusader, 
he married my times 24 great grandmother Matilda of Huntington. Obviously he died in a crusade or after, shortly afterwards. Simon, so she married again. And she married David I of Scotland. So going back down all the way around there, look. That's my side of the family. So all the ancestors coming all the way up to Matilda. And then this way, in yellow, we go all the way all the way up onto this to Prince William, Duke of Cambridge, his dad, Prince Charles. If we flip them over, we get the husband or wife on the other side. So the idea is try just trying to explain how we share these royal ancestors. For example, we've got King James I of England and the, the VI of Scotland. Hence the Union Jack, uniting England and Scotland for the first time with, with that marriage. And who did he marry? He married Anne of Denmark. They often married very wealthy royal families in Europe. This was very common. And they often married cousins. There's all sorts of interrelationships. Now here we've got all the Jameses. It's very royal, very Scottish, I should say the Queen's side of the family and ours is quite English and Norman in this side very Norman actually a lot of these people came over with the, with the Conqueror like the Stutfels of course they all lost their wealth about the start of the 18th century end of the 17th these two here Charles and his son Thomas Something happened then, it could have been the Agricultural Revolution, but all the money went. They had to sell Dunham. Cecil Rhodes, founder of Rhodesia, bought it at one point. The Afflicks. And then we come to nearer relations of mine. Get more humble and humble as we go back in time. I've just got to work out a way of trying to display this so that they can understand that they are connected to the Queen but a long way back so there says, there's Daisy down there look and she's gonna have to go back there's her mum there's me there's my mum and back and back and back and back to Matilda of Huntington we share her with the Queen all the way back here, look, to Prince William. What I was thinking of doing is, um, if I had 50 kids, I could pair them all up. And they could all be princes and ordinary people, sirs and everything. There's a lot of names to learn. It's a good way of learning history, actually. So that's it folks, there's a little bit about the tree and trying to think of a way of explaining it to someone who's eight or nine years old, how they are connected to a person right up here with a gap of about sort of 25 generations. Because this way it looks longer but they actually run side by side which is what I've done with the piece of paper. They're actually going down through the centuries together, uh, next door to each other, like this, like, like that here. You see? Going together. Oh, let me just turn up another. See, there's a, there's um. In 1683, for example, we've got King George II. And not, yeah, about 10 so years later. You know, King George II died in 1760. Well, one of my great grandfathers, he died in 1759. Look, he was a reverend. So it's going down parallel. 
so that they're roughly round about the same time um, in, in um, dates and I've just showed a little bit more of the tree as well so this this part of the tree is called Sheila's Medieval Ancestors but I have I can click on there and I go onto my wood my wood tree go onto my wood tree look and we've got the, we've got all these people that I've got on the floor there all these there's the the, the declares for example there's Matilda there you see and then we can we go back in time or we can go back that way either way we go There are, there's um, Matilda Van Hunton's grandmother is William the Conqueror's sister. It's a bit slow when I'm doing it like this, isn't it? There are the magnificent Duke of Normandy, Robert the First. Over and out, everybody. So just to get, give a bit of an, an impression of how we can understand this parallel tree. And of course, that's just one line going back. There are hundreds of lines that can be used like this. This is just one small example of a parallel tree. It can be used all over your tree where you want to look for a shared ancestor, what you've got in common with somebody. I get people contacting me all the time and we've usually got an ancestor in common somewhere and then we can work out our relationship to each other. Right, I think that'll be it for now.